Marketing and Strategic Alliances, Ian Ferguson. Morning. Welcome to 2000, um, 2016, our TechCon. Um, we've got a couple of changes this year. Um, we, we heard your feedback. Um, we're going to put a lot more uh, technical things into the sessions uh, this year. So in addition to hearing from Mike Muller, our CTO, uh, in a little bit, uh, you're going to hear this week from a couple of ARM fellows, uh, Greg Yarrick and Jim Davis. You're going to hear from an engineer who hacked a Jeep. Uh, that's Charlie Miller. You're going to hear from a man who has actually changed uh, the maker movement in quite a significant way. That's Eben Upton, who runs the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And you're going to hear from a, a gentleman that spent all of his days and actually quite a few nights in the world of open source software trying to make ARM-based infrastructure a reality, and that's uh, John Masters from Red Hat. But, but of course, the way we start this has to be with the, the man that continues to lead ARM forward on its journey. Please welcome Simon Seegers, ARM CEO. Thanks, Ian. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. Come on. You good? You good. You good. All right. Well, welcome to uh, TechCon 2016. Uh, we've been running this conference since 2003, um, and every year it seems to get bigger, more stuff to talk about, uh, more innovation going on uh, around the industry. Uh, it's a really vibrant partnership, and I want to thank you all uh, for your contribution to it, and coming here every year to making this uh, such a fantastic uh, event. So here we are in 2016. Uh, it doesn't seem like 12 months since we were last here. It's been a, a very busy year, um, and quite an amazing year, I think, uh, for all of us. If I look back at 2015, um, almost 15 billion ARM-based chips were shipped by the ARM partnership. That's a phenomenal number, and it adds up to about $50 billion worth of silicon. Now, in absolute terms, they're big numbers, but what's also impressive is the growth. Uh, that's an increase of about 20% year on year. So phenomenal progress uh, from this partnership. And whilst we've seen the continued growth in the sophistication of mobile devices, more and more technology going into them, becoming smarter and smarter all the time, we're seeing growth in lots of other markets as well. We've seen ARM technology deployed in supercomputers. We've seen ARM technology deployed in tiny sensors that are almost invisible, so small you can barely see them but are going to form the Internet of Things. So we're seeing growth in lots and lots of markets, and that's all coming uh, from the innovation that all of us together are creating. What that innovation is doing is deploying intelligence, and what's uh, really exciting for me is that there is no stopping the demand for intelligent silicon. The demand for processor-based intelligent silicon is not going down anytime soon, and that's going to drive enormous opportunities uh, for everyone. So every year at TechCon, uh, things are different. Something has changed that, uh, that brings us all together. There's some new thing for us to talk about. Um, and as I'm sure you've probably noticed, um, over the last couple of months, uh, ARM changed a little bit. ARM was acquired by SoftBank. Now, there was a lot about uh, SoftBank's acquisition of ARM that was unprecedented. We went from announcing the deal to closing it in just seven weeks. And for a deal of this magnitude, that really is a, a very unusual thing. But for me, that was a great thing, because it meant that we got very quickly from the mode of working out how to close such a large acquisition to now just heads down, getting on with delivering all the benefits that are going to come uh, from that acquisition. Now, being acquired was a whole new experience for me. I can tell you, as a CEO, being approached by somebody who says, you know, I'd really like to buy your company, and here's a large offer, that kind of uh, takes your breath away for a moment. Uh, so new experience for me, learned a lot about uh, takeover code and all sorts of stuff that I really never wanted to learn about. Um, but now we're in that mode of getting on with things. But when you get approached, you have to think about, well, okay, what's this going to do for us? What's it going to do for every stakeholder that cares about ARM? Obviously, you have to think about what it, what it does for your shareholders. This is a great return for the shareholders who own the company, after all. 
but also at the same time, and equally important, well, what's it going to do for our partnership? As you all know, our partnership is an incredibly, va incredibly valuable thing, and it's something we hold very, very dearly. All the cool stuff that we carry around only comes from the work that we do together. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, what does it do for the partnership? What does it do for the company? What does it do for our employees? Does this deliver a better and more exciting future where we can do more? And it became pretty apparent to me very, very quickly uh, that this acquisition by SoftBank was going to do exactly that. It was going to allow us to pursue our ambitions faster and with more scale and more aggressively than we could have done before. So that made this acquisition a really exciting uh, prospect. Not only that, but I was really excited by the proposition of partnering with Masayoshi Son, the founder, chairman, CEO of SoftBank, uh, because I can tell you his vision for the future is as big as you could possibly think of, and you're going to be hearing a bit more about that later. So Mass has been that driving force in the growth of SoftBank, uh, a, a company which uh, uh, I've always admired, and it's now a great opportunity for us to work together. So this acquisition took everyone by surprise, um, took me by surprise when they first made the offer to us, I can tell you. Um, and I've had lots of meetings with, uh, with our customers, with our partners, um, where I've been you know, reinforcing our commitment, the commitments that we made in public when we announced the deal, um, about continuing the investment in our technology, uh, aggressively investing to accelerate our roadmap, um, staying committed to our business model and investing for the long term. And the kind of feedback I get from these meetings is people go, uh-huh, very interesting, but why was it that SoftBank bought on? If that is the question that's uh, been on everyone's lips, and I'm sure uh, what you all have been thinking about coming in uh, today, and as much as I talk about that, that's like, well, Simon, your, your opinion's interesting, but you know, we really want to hear it uh, from Massa himself. So we took the opportunity with this event, which was timed perfectly relative to the acquisition, uh, to invite Massa here today to come and talk to all of you. Now, Massa's interest in technology goes back a long way. Uh, he studied at UC Berkeley, just up the road here, uh, where he first came across microprocessors and semiconductors and, and fell in love with what they could do um, and what they could enable uh, for society in the future. Um, I first met Massa about 10 years ago. I was out in Japan uh, with my predecessor, Warren East, and we went to meet uh, Massa in his office when they'd not long uh, just completed their acquisition of uh, Vodafone Japan, and so we're getting into mobile, and we were swapping notes about uh, how we thought the mobile industry was going to progress. Then that time since I first met him, and we've met a few times over the years, we've seen SoftBank grow into this global uh, powerhouse. It's a business that was founded back in 1981, um, and it's never stood still. I mean, even in the time since we announced the acquisition of Arm, uh, Mass has been out on the road raising money to launch uh, a vision fund of $100 billion. And that's a lot of money to put to work to enable the delivery uh, of his vision. So I'm really glad that he's uh, with us uh, this week, with us today, uh, able to see the ecosystem in action, to, to meet with all of you and to put into his own words how ARM is essential to the delivery of that vision. So with that, let me wrap up. We're going to have a bit of Q&A later, but first let me uh, welcome to the stage Masayoshi san my boss, founder, chairman and CEO of the SoftBank Group. Masa. Good morning. I am, I am so excited. I'm so happy. So, as uh, Simon was mentioning, uh, I just want to assure to all the partners of ARM, uh, after SoftBank acquisition, basic business model does not change. Uh, ARM is committed. I am committed to provide neutrality to all the partners, provide, continuously provide the platform that everybody can uh, rely on. So don't worry, I'm going to make everybody happier. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask you a, a favor. Could you follow my instruction? Okay? Just for three seconds. Please close your eyes for three seconds and I if I say open, please open. 
Please close your eyes. Open your eyes. Okay, what you, what you have seen when you have your eyes open, what you, have, you could not see when you have closed your eyes, is a totally different world. Okay? So let me ask you a question. Uh, please raise your hand if you know the answer. What is the first species on the earth which had the eyes? First, first species got the eyes. <coughs> you open your eyes, you close your eyes, you have a totally different scene. Please raise your hand if you know the answer. Okay, one guy. <laughs> Good, I'm happy. <laughs> Now I can give you something that you did not know. Many of you did not know. Okay, the answer is trilobite. Trilobite, okay? That page is going to come. So let me start my presentation. So 500 million years ago, the earth was covered with full of water, the ocean. So the latest uh, study by the uh, scientists, uh, the uh, They say that the Cambrian explosion has happened on the earth. So before this period, the number of species on the earth was only several small number of species, very small number of species. Right after this explosion, Cambrian explosion, uh, tens of thousands of species arise, were born on the earth. Okay. This was a very important moment for the history of species, the lives on the earth. Okay. And uh, in this period, the first species that came, this beautiful species, so beautiful in my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Look at here. Look at this thing. This is eyes. This is the first eyes in the species. This trilobite. This trilobite, as the first species, got the eyes. So, the species who got the eyes and no eyes, what is the difference? The guys who got the eyes can chase, can escape. If, the, if you got the eyes, and if there are other species, you can chase and eat. So if you don't have eyes, you just have to escape randomly. If you got the eyes, you can chase and directly go after the other species and eat. So you wanna be, do you want to be a species got to be eaten? Or you would rather be the one to be eating? Eating or eaten? Which one is better? <laughs> okay? So the first species, this was a revolution. This was a revolutionary you know, uh, improvement in the functionality in the species. The origin of the first life was sensor, sensor. That was first sensor, that was eyes, okay? The, the important sensor, the eyes. These eyes make a huge difference. So the key to the evolution is sensing. I just said eyes as one example, okay? Not just eyes, okay? If you can, if you can feel the image, not only image, if you can smell, if you can hear, If you can have a touch, those sensing make a huge difference. And so, if, if you sense, and then the brain, the first thing what the brain does is recognize, and then learn, and then inference. And then that goes to the actuator. This cycle is the key. This cycle is the key. 
This will improve your brain, right? So today, this sensing from the first eye, from trilobite, we should learn from them. We should learn from them that if you got the eyes, now that in today's technology, that we can put in IoT. So with this today's technology, with IoT, you put the sensor and then recognize and then learning, deep learning, right? Inference. And then you actuate. This cycle is the same as the evolution of species. So if there was Cambrian explosion, there would be IoT explosion. That's what I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to say. Cambrian explosion and IoT explosion is basically the same thing. So IoT, no, the center of internet, the gravity of center of internet has migrated from PC to mobile. And we saw this great evolution in the last several years. But next big paradigm shift is coming from mobile into the IoT. That's what I believe. So people ask me, many people ask me, why Masa? Why are you interested in you know, acquiring ARM? Where is the synergy from what SoftBank does? And why is it now? Why do you pay 40% premium? And why did you pay $32 billion? This is the answer. I said, now is the time. This is the Cambrian explosion. Right? So, oh, I, I skipped one page. Uh, there is no going back. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I was too quick. <laughs> so in the next two years, the number of devices, okay, in uh, uh, mobile and number of IoT chips, devices, uh, crossover in the next two years. Crossover, right? So this is important. And uh, uh, so center of uh, gravity for the connectivity is going from PC, that was past, and uh, going into mobile, that's current, but going forward, the center of gravity will migrate again to IoT. So that's <coughs> in the next two years. I don't care whether it's next year or next three years, roughly coming in the next couple of years. More importantly, in the next 20 years, what happens? Next 20 years, one trillion IoTs. One trillion IoT in cumulative is happening. So this is the explosion in my definition. This is Cambrian explosion, right? So this is going to provide a huge traffic. Last year, let's say it was one etabyte, and that will be uh, 2.3 zettabyte. Right? That's the total traffic by the IOTs, which is <coughs> dramatical growth. The number of, number of devices explode, the traffic explode, the center of gravity of the communications explode, change. So the one trillion device that gives the convert into data, well, I would say 100% of the time, okay, whatever happening on the earth, the image, the smell, the temperature, you know, touch, whatever, whatever thing that's happening on the earth. Without chip, there is no data. 100% of the time, when you have a data, that means there is a chip right there. So chip is the key to the data. And that one trillion chips will convert whatever happening on the earth into data. And then that goes aggregated into the big data crowd. That's what happening. This is the first time on the earth that we are going to experience okay, one trillion 
chips, aggregate all kinds of data on real time, whatever, aggregate. And we can, we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, we can aggregate. And we can do all kinds of analysis. This analytic will give us intelligence. And this deep learning will make us super smart. When that thing comes, okay, security becomes essential. As we all experience, we see almost every day now, or well, somebody hacked some important information and some uh, institution got hacked, right? So this is very dangerous uh, uh, society that we are living now. So security becomes more and more important. I, I would say in some sense, security function become more important than you can double the clock cycle, you can double the memory size, you can you know, reduce the cost by half. Those are important, but without security, this becomes so dangerous. Just imagine, you know, even today's world, today new car, when you buy a new car, a thousand chips exist inside one car. Hundreds of ARM core chips exist in one car today. And did you know that you, the car that you are driving, the car that you are driving, in driver seat or passenger seat. Have you ever imagined that the car that you are driving with hundreds of chips, they are not encrypted? Can you believe? They are not encrypted. There is no security. Did you know that? Did you ever think of that? On the way home from today, from this <laughs> here, you have to worry yourself. Can I stay here in the car? Is this safe? Hundreds of chips, they are not <coughs> encrypted at all. When they were non-connected cars, it was okay. You just ask Toyota, you just ask Mercedes, please take care of my security. They were not connected. But now, connected car is coming to us. When connected car comes, okay, already many of these cars are getting connected now, even now, okay? When you have connected car and then you, your car got hacked, it's pretty easy to go hack connected car because there is basically zero security inside the car, zero encryption. So, it's pretty easy to go hack the car and disable, put the virus, right? And next day, the old virus wake up. In one day, at one given time, let's say 9 a.m., April 2nd, right? 9 a.m. Suddenly, every virus wake up and disable the control of the steering, control of the brake. What happened? Every car go crash on the highway. This will be a chaos. <coughs> Next 30 years, highway system will be all disabled. This is a real disaster. So, every car, Today, none of the connected cars, none of the, these cars are encrypted in the chip. This is a pretty serious situation. I shouldn't talk too much. <laughs> eh? We shouldn't give too much hint to the bad guys. <laughs> anyway, the security becomes so critical. And all these IoT devices should be connected to the big data crowd in a secure manner. So the next is artificial intelligence. So these IoT get connected, they become smart, and then they connect to the crowd. Either the uh, 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 local level, uh, client level intelligence, or intelligence in the crowd. 
These are all get connected. And deep learning would start happening, evolution, every day. And now, today, already the speech recognition, the visual recognition is surpassing our human recognitions. So these are becoming a very, very functional, very, very useful. So the games, you know, the artificial intelligence is beating the human players, and they can even create new arts or healthcare and, and so on. So this IoT, the sensing, you know, Cambrian explosion with uh, one trillion chips, and then also connecting to the super smart intelligence, <coughs> this will become singularity. So this brain computer that will have a super intelligence and that, that will make our life to be more efficient. We can predict uh, about the future more precisely. We will have the system with, that can prevent accident. And we can live much longer with healthy uh, situation. All these things are good. Some bad thing could also uh, be anticipated. But whether we like it or not, technology will evolve. This Cambrian explosion is happening, whether you like it or not. So, as I said in the beginning of my speech today, would you like to be the side that you would rather be able to eat or to be eaten? We have to equip ourselves with the new technology, the new enabler uh, on our side. The one who would evolve with a new technology can live a better life in m many cases. Okay? So I would really say, sorry, go back one page, <laughs> one trillion. One trillion connectivity is coming. Right? So this will jumpstart our evolution, <coughs> our human evolution, our evolution on the earth. We will live in, on the earth with ourselves, with the super intelligent robot, super intelligent devices, the infrastructure, the society, the environment. So I would say this revolution, we will make it happen. Why do we make it happen? Because we want to save people's life. We want to make people happier. We want to see this smile, big smile of the family members, the children and senior citizens. This is what we have to do. And this revolution cannot be made only by one guy, only by one company. This will be a revolution made to ourselves happier with the effort of the team, with collective effort of mankind. <coughs> and I hope uh, this will be our great future. This is coming. Thank you very much. So we just see if I get switched on. Yeah, so we're just going to set up a quick Q and A. I guess I need a bigger stool. I'm the short guy. All right. Um, so let's start. You, um, Simon, you talked earlier about 15 billion units shipping last year, and that really wasn't from arm, it's from a lot of people in the, in the room here. Um, Masa, you talked about a trillion units. So talk to us a little bit about from where we are and what do you think this, this audience and, and us as th that partnership that you talked about really needs to do to 
make that vision a reality. Yeah, well, uh, ask Simon to continue to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, it, this would not happen by arm as a standalone company. It will happen only together with the partners. Right? The arm just provides a core, and that arm core will be aggregated, integrated, with the all kinds of functionality, and more memory, put the memories, put the modem, put the graphic enhancement, all of these enhancements for, for the specific needs for each of the applications. And that will only happen with partners, so many partners that create the uh, system on chip. Okay. Yeah, I think we're, we're really just at the start of seeing how connected devices can really uh, provide benefit. I mean, there are billions and billions of microcontrollers sold every year, but most of them are going into things which aren't connected. You know, uh, cars are becoming increasingly connected, but most of them aren't. Um, and so, you know, we really just uh, are at the start of seeing um, how, how the benefits can come about, what they can do. And the cool thing about this ecosystem, this partnership, is that, you know, it isn't us, it isn't any one company that comes up with the killer application or creates all the, the solutions. It is the combination, it's, it's everyone working together, and it's the innovation that comes from just putting these phenomenal uh, building blocks in everyone's hand to go and in innovate with. All right. Yeah, I, I, I have a car, at least I did until Master's presentation. It's going to be available pretty soon on the market. Um, so, I guess, Simon, um, we're, we're six weeks in or so uh, since, since the, the deal uh, closed. Um, again, for the audience, what things do you think they can expect that's really uh, the same and, and you know, thinking of the ecosystem out there, what, what, what things do you think are going to change a little bit uh, now, now we're part of SoftBank? Yeah. So, yeah, six weeks in, I mean, it's, it's largely business as usual for ARM. Um, you know, the day the acquisition closed, uh, I, you know, at, at some level people were kind of expecting something, but uh, they, these uh, events are always uh, somewhat anti-climaxes uh, anti um, because we're continuing to do what we do. Um, what we've been doing since the, the deal has closed is really working out how we go about um, delivering on this vision, how we go about um, uh, investing to accelerate what we're doing, uh, looking for the key areas which are going to provide those technology building blocks so all these solutions can come together and we can more quickly enable innovation. So what we're going to do, what people will see, is, is us making bigger, longer-term bets. Uh, in us uh, uh, accelerating the development of our roadmap uh, to, to just try and get it done quickly. I mean, we're, we're kind of collectively being impatient. Uh, we want that, that future delivered as soon as possible. Um, so we're going to try and invest to, to make it happen. And I guess just in front of a few friends here, Massa, how's <coughs> Simon doing six weeks in? <laughs> <laughs> Simon is doing fantastic. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, uh, Master, a question for you. You obviously have a number of companies in, in the SoftBank group. Talk a little bit about um, uh, how you envision getting involved with ARM and, and, and how, how that's going to work out based on, on how you run some of the other companies. Yeah, so uh, as you can imagine, uh, I only got 24 hours a day. Uh, and I only got a limited capacity uh, uh, myself. So. Uh, I do not intend to micromanage. I have a great captains uh, on, on the uh, several boats that we have. Uh, so, you know, if, if you have a great ship, great voyage, great direction, and you got a great captain, uh, I, I'm just so happy. <laughs> right? So, uh, I don't, I don't, as I say, I don't ever intend to micromanage day to day. I only, but I'm very excited about talking strategy, talking about what happened next 10 years, next 20 years. I'm not that much interested in at all for the next quarter, uh, what happens. Uh, that's, that's not my, my focus, my interest. Right? Okay. Um, Some uh, put you on the spot with a slightly different question. Um, China. Um, yeah. Um, been there. Talk, hmm? I've been there. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I think we all have. Uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, we, 
we've been doing some things in China, recognizing that China's a little bit different um, in terms of the value chain and ecosystem and things. Mm. Maybe give, give people a little bit of an update what's, what's going on there from the ARM perspective and maybe what changes a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so always been a big market for us and we're seeing a, a ton of innovation. Um, you know, what's interesting in the, in the context of what we've been talking about so far uh, here at TechCon is you know, how IoT technology is being deployed in, in many different ways. Um, whether it's uh, you know, focus around smart cities, whether it's trying to solve um, congestion problems in cities with different transportation uh, mechanisms. I mean, I was in, in uh, Beijing a few weeks ago, and you just see the amount of experimentation that's going on with, um, you know, electric cars, with G uh, electric bikes with GPSs that you just go and find under a tree from your app. Um, it's, it's a great example of that Cambrian explosion of people taking low-cost technology and building something and seeing if it works or not. And if it doesn't, you know, you didn't bankrupt yourself in the process. So a ton of innovation going on. Uh, we're investing there. And again, we'll, we'll look to do as much as we can as quickly as we can. Um, we uh, launched some, uh, some accelerators over the last couple of years. We now have uh, three or four um, up and running. We're putting together uh, an investment fund with a local PE firm to, again, just try and stimulate innovation that will pull through everything we do. Um, and create these solutions. Okay, great. Um, Marcia, you talked in your presentation about singularity and artificial intelligence and how machines are now actually solving problems better than humans. So, since I am vaguely human, um, talk to us about the sort of the, what's, the, what's the role of, of the human in the future in, in that sort of scenario? Well, <clears throat> we, should, we should always be ourselves. You know, the human always continue to try to, you know, uh, uh, bring the family together, bring the friends and love and be loved. Uh, we help each other, we care about the other people, we create a society. So that's, that's very, very important that that should not change. Uh, just these technologies help us solve the issues that we human could not solve in the past or they can also help us do it more efficiently so they will be a, a great companion for our happiness that's my view okay um and and, and another one for you um you, you announced a, a new <coughs> vision fund uh, a couple of weeks ago i think Some, time sometimes goes a little fast maybe talk a little bit about um what your thoughts are with that? Is that about accelerating your reality here that you're talking about? Yes. Uh, you know, as I said, in my long-term view, uh, vision, uh, singularity is definitely coming, right? So, we, when, and this explosion of IoT is really coming. When that happens, uh, there are reinvention of many things. Uh, so first in the internet, media was reinvented. The shopping was, commerce was reinvented. Now transportation is getting reinvented. The finance is going to be reinvented. The healthcare going to be reinvented. Mm. So there will be suddenly a huge range of opportunities. Such exciting opportunities coming in front of us. Uh, so $100 billion is not enough, but it's a good start. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 enough, for that, it? It, it, it's enough for me. It's enough for me. I'd even take 10. Um, so Simon, um, again, we've got the ecosystem here in, in, in front of us. Some last words for, you know, what do you really want to convey to this audience about this new world and, uh, and also about sort of like the next few days, about what, what, what we have at TechCon and what you'd like people to get out of it. Yeah, so uh, you know, we talked about singularity and how technology is going to um, accelerate. You know, that is all about improving the quality of life. I mean, every technological advance we've seen um, has improved quality of life, it's improved life expectancy. And you know, there's no reason, I think, to assume that that's going to be any different in the future. What we're going to see here from ARM is, is some of the new products and uh, uh, services that, that we're creating. Uh, what we're going to see from you know, 
all of you is, is the cool stuff that you're doing with that. So uh, lots of uh, very strong technical papers for the expo. We're going to see how people are bringing this all together uh, and hopefully whet people's appetite for what is yet to come in the future. So it should be a great couple of days. Great. Masayoshi san and Simon, thank you very much. Thank you.